I'm going to show you how to get rid of your Morton's neuroma. So that's this nerve down here that causes a sharp shooting zapping pain. This right here is the anatomy of the Morton's neuroma. So you can see your metatarsal heads. One, two, three, four, five. The neuroma can come right here most of the time, but can also happen frequently in here. Disclaimer, we can't actually give it advice online, so don't listen to anything we ever say. So I'm gonna draw these ligaments in pur purple. These are called your intermetatarsal ligaments. If you're pushing up here, that's more of a plantar plate injury. Uh, but if you press between here or here by squeezing above and below, so see how I'm squeezing above and below or above and below there, that's more like a Morton neuroma. So when I squeeze, you get a sharp spasm. That's indicative of a Morton neuroma. So taking a look at the bottom right here, these are what the nerves look like right here. So you can see right through there you have your nerves in between so that's what i just drew right here you have your morton's neuroma up here and up here this is called the Mulder's click test when you squeeze and then at the same time touch the middle and the toes click and spasm that is a Mulder's click and here is the neuroma so this is the bottom of your skin as you walk your skin pushes up on this nerve right here. So there's a lot of pressure up and it gets stuck between this ligament, the bones and the bottom of your foot. Kind of how you bump your elbow and get a funny bone shot. That's what happens to your neuroma site that causes a lot of pain in this area in that regard. So if this is over five millimeters, Usually people had very poor results after six months of therapy. So if you have a lot of scar tissue, a lot of damage, this usually takes years to build up. But if you have that built up, usually people found in these studies, they had poor and poor and poor results. But if it's under five millimeters, all these things like Botox injections, steroid injections, sclerosing alcohol inserts, they had a dramatically higher rate of success. So this is an ultrasound of a pregnant woman, but we could use the same device to record the thickness of your Morton's neuroma. That's how we know whether it's five millimeters or more in thickness. So here's what the study showed in terms of conservative therapy based on the diameter of the nerves. If the nerve was under five millimeters, uh, within six months, 85% of them got better doing non-surgical therapies. But if it was over five millimeters, that means a very thick, a very scarred, a very swollen nerve in diameter. What happened was only 59% of these nerves got better. So check the show notes for these studies. Here's the therapies that they tried. So number one, here's kind of out there studies that you'll hear about that people actually have published papers on but they're lower quality studies. That means they tested like five to 10 people. They didn't really have control groups. They didn't randomize the subjects. They found, here's what's effective. Botox is effective. So you can inject around that nerve with Botox. That can work, but it's not the best thing. Probably not the best use of your money. Number two, they found that sclerosing alcohol works. Repeated pure alcohol injections can kill the nerve and deaden it. That will obviously make your pain go away. The next thing is orthotics and inserts. If the nerve is thin, so under five millimeters in uh, diameter, very, very successful in some cases, the orthotics, good shoe gear, but you already knew that. Uh, everybody already knows not wearing high heels, not wearing uh, flats. Um, if you wear a good supported running shoe like Brooks, Asics, New Balance, this stuff is so successful. It works really well. In fact, while this is hard to prove in studies because it's hard to control for, I'm a huge fan of great shoes. If you have great shoes and great orthotics, you're pretty much guaranteed to get better, in my opinion, unless you've had this pain for decades and you're so traumatized to that nerve that it just needs to be cut out. Here's what I consider a good shoe. 
So this is a great shoe right here because it's stiff in the heel and it doesn't bend. And we have an orthotic right here. So you have a nice orthotic. You can even add some extra padding in the front right here. So it takes, so it creates a groove for your uh, Neuroma. That is, and I know this isn't a study here, but I pretty much tell 100% of people to expect huge improvement, if not complete fix of their neuroma. That's me personally. I find if we get an aggressive enough insert, if we get a good enough shoe and people actually wear it. So if you do those three things, you're guaranteed to get at least 50% better. I've never had a person, unless they've given up and not done it, not get better. The next thing you can do is obviously weight loss. So one pound of weight loss is a three pounds less of pressure on your feet of momentum. So just to recap, one pound of weight loss is three pounds less of pressure on your foot. That's huge in terms of your neuroma. And the next thing is, this is what I highly recommend to people is, consider that from age 20 to age 65, you lose 40%, that's four zero percent of your lean body mass. Uh, that means your muscle mass, almost half of your muscle mass is lost. That means your legs are weaker, you can't support yourself as well. And usually people don't weigh 50% less, they usually weigh 50% more. So your muscles, your feet are working like four times harder. That's just me uh, doing the math in my head. But that's how you gotta think about it. That's how much your body, unfortunately, for all human beings, not just you, I'm not singling you, YouTube viewer out, but as you get older, unfortunately, it's sad to say, that's how much we deteriorate, it's scary. So you gotta work on your leg strength, you gotta work on your flexibility. You have to get great shoes and you have to get great orthotics inside your shoe. These inserts and shoes can make up for that muscle loss, but get losing weight and gaining that muscle back is possible. So that's my input on those studies, but here's the number one. Here's the number one study and the number one result is the most successful study is, people don't wanna hear it, but it's steroid injections. Um, in this meta-analysis, the number one most successful thing that they found worked for people was uh, corticosteroid injections. Now there's lots of different types that they studied. There's Kenalog, uh, there's dexamethasone. Uh, personally, what I love to do, and this is what's effective for people, is you take a needle, So you take a needle and you actually come with the needle into the top of the foot. So you can see right here, I come through the top and it goes through the skin in between the bone and injects at the nerve site right there. Because here's why this is important is you have on average, I'm going to estimate here about 10 times the nerve receptors on the bottom of your foot. Uh, I would not wish to torture my worst enemy by injecting them in the bottom of the foot. You wanna come from the top of the foot. So here's what we do in our clinic and here's what we find very successful is we take alcohol, we clean off the top of the foot. Uh, we use an antiseptic material, sometimes betadine. Uh, we have a very, very thin needle. So we use a 30 gauge needle. So on average in the hospital, it's like a 25 gauge needle. The diameter is something like on the order of one tenth the diameter less. So once you go down to a 30 gauge needle, it's a much, much thinner needle. Don't quote me on that, but it's significantly thinner. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember the exact thinness that's taking place. But what does happen is that injection is much less painful from the top. It's much less painful with the 30 gauge needle and we freeze it ahead of time. So you can put ice on there, but what we use is a spray. So we go, it sprays, you get completely numb. Then we come in with the needle, then we drop off the injection. Here's what's normal with the injection is um, you feel great almost immediately. You feel a lot of pressure, it's like a lump because we inject uh, a couple cc's, so like two to three cc's of fluid. It's a mixture of anesthetic 
uh, so lidocaine with a little bit of steroid. We mix that in there and uh, your foot starts feeling great. After any injection, you will always feel a little bit bruised the next day. Uh, you will definitely feel a little bit bruised, but as that starts to wear off, you greatly start to feel better very quickly. So as that anesthetic starts to wear off, what happens is you get a little bit bruised the next day, but then the pain greatly decreases. So usually for the next few weeks, you feel dramatically better. And that's where you do the good stuff that I'm talking about, the good shoes, the good inserts, the good orthotics. That's what helps you dramatically. Uh, this is what studies show does help you. So um, get your get your steroid injection. Don't be afraid of it. The, the Where steroid injections, and this is what the papers show too, where steroid injections get a bad rap is if you don't correct the biomechanics. If you just keep pounding that nerve, you don't get good orthotics. If you don't get good shoes, that's where the steroid injection fails. And unfortunately, these studies don't take that into account. It's almost like you have a bruise and somebody's punching that bruise. I'm punching it and we're just trying to get rid of the bruise, but we never do anything about the fist. That's the flaw in these studies. And it's very hard to study this because it's a lot of variables. That's why um, the injection nor stopping the fist, which in this case is the orthotics and the, uh, and the shoes, that's why it doesn't show as much success rate is because it's not one variable, whereas surgery is one variable. So in my opinion, these studies are flawed because you're not just doing in one injection and you're not just doing the inserts, you're doing both. You wanna get rid of the pain and you wanna add the inserts and the shoes. I find, and I know, attack me in the comments if you need to, but I find nearly 100% improvement uh, when it comes to doing the injection, the insert, and the shoes, especially here's what's a cherry on top. This is what dramatically blows that out of the water is if you can drop even five pounds, if you can drop 10 pounds, that's 30 pounds less of pressure on your feet with each step. So that hard punch turns into a soft love tap. Oh, there we go. It's a nice love tap, no pain there. And you get rid of the pain that thickness comes down under five millimeters. Personally, uh, you know, when I was coming up through residency, we were taught to do a lot of excision. So we were slicing out those nerves. People are just having a dead area in that nerve uh, nerve region, but they had to go undergo surgery. It's very expensive. Uh, we certainly have too much surgery going on in society anyway, as it is today. Um, but that's where your podiatrist can help, you know? Um, and this is the truth. Historically, uh, podiatrists had a hard time publishing this kind of stuff because they weren't hospital based. Uh, surgeons are hospital based and there's more funding for studies. So there's more money pumped into these surgical studies proving how great and awesome uh, neuroma surgery is. But now as you're seeing more podiatrists in hospital systems, doing more and more research, uh, the, this evidence is coming out how successful uh, non-surgical foot and ankle therapies are. It truly does work when done properly and you can trust in the studies. So this is Tom Bernacki. I hope that this video on the evidence of Morton's Neuroma treatment helped you. So just to recap, um, here's what's good but not your number one choice. You can do Botox injections. You can do sclerosing alcohol. You can do cryotherapy. You can do all this stuff, but the number one thing is get evaluated by your podiatrist for your biomechanics. Make sure nothing's wrong biomechanically. Get a great pair of shoes. Get a great pair of inserts. Get an x-ray. Get an ultrasound. Because if you are over five millimeters, you might need more. You might need those injections. You might actually need that surgery. But if you're under that five millimeter diameter range, uh, then you're probably gonna get better by seeing your podiatrist and taking care of some of these therapies. So this is Tom Bernacki. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you watching. Uh, keep checking in for this multi-part series about Morton's Neuroma. Tell us what you think about this scientific feedback. Thank you.